Coming up right now, a genetic testing company hacked, exposing almost 7 million users. Also coming up, a runaway chihuahua named Bean saved in a dramatic caught on video highway rescue. And a little bit later on, how do you eat your soup? Progresso settles an online Ooh. debate about whether soup can actually, well, we'll tell you, coming up. A <laughs> Daily Flash starts right now. Get ready. For trending news and entertainment, this is Daily Flash with your hosts, Andrea Jackson and Mitch English. The fun starts right now. This is Daily Flash. Jackson. I am Mitch English, sitting in place and ready to go. We welcome <laughs> you to Daily Flash. Yeah. Yeah, loving the radio stations, playing all the music. Flash Do you have festive. a favorite uh, song? Baby, it's cold outside. Baby, mine is the Eagles version of oh. uh, Please Come Home for Christmas. Oh. Bells will be ringing. Oh, Love that's that. nice. What about you, Maddie? You listen to any uh, holiday music? So I was, I was scrolling around on the internet, as one does, yes. and uh, <laughs> Rosie O'Donnell had a Christmas song. No, what? She did not. A very rosy Christmas. Are you kidding me? And it, and it blew my mind. Now, I know she was big into like show tunes and stuff. Oh, yeah, it's all show okay, tunes right, and everything, yeah. but she was one of the more okay. surprising ones because I was just like, oh, who has a random Christmas album? Rosie O'Donnell. And, okay, and by the way, let's all remind everybody Rosie O'Donnell was the first Karen. Remember the haircut? Yes. Oh, yes. She had the first Karen haircut, haircut back in the day. Point. And it did something to her. Do you remember that? She was the queen of nice. Uh -huh. Everybody loved her. She got this haircut. All of a sudden, she went Lights like 180, out. man. Yeah. She wasn't into Tom Cruise anymore. No, I right. mean, her whole life changed. <laughs> yeah, the big just life with that changed. haircut. Uh, but you know, I, I, I liked her. I, you know, you look back. It, it, it was that negative thing, and who knows what was going on in her life. She was, uh, was in a television series on Showtime called American Gigolo, and she played a detective, and she was fantastic yes. in it. Really good. And, and she's a funny woman. Yeah, so she is. Um, okay, how many packages? do you get delivered to your house this time of year? Uh, okay, a day or yeah, yeah. I would say we probably every other day we get something delivered okay. at our house. So okay, Matt, at doubt. least four or five. I showed up to a pyramid the other day. <laughs> at least four or five. Yeah. So Amazon drivers were asked about the things they least like to deliver. Okay. There are three top things that they hate delivering. Okay. One is cat litter. We get it. Every we get it. Okay. <laughs> Two, it's dog food. No, we don't have dog food. And three, it's bottled water. Now imagine bottled water is heavy. Is that all? Why? Those things are heavy and yeah. a pain in the butt to deliver. So they require some extra effort on their part. Their argument is, why can't you get it at the store? Because you forget about it. That's yes. it. And, and you know my, how my household is. It has to be like organic uh, cat litter from the Himalayan <laughs> right, uh, salts. Right. Blessed by a monk. Yes. Blessed by a monk. On a Tuesday. And, sort of and kosher. And ko yeah. yeah. And, uh, but we do get this kind of, it's ground up walnuts. It's actually so. Are you serious? No, no I mean dead serious. Just go your with your coyote stuff too. Ground up walnuts? Well, yes. And, and she likes it because what do you do with, wal with leftover walnuts? You throw them away. So they're like, well, make cat litter out of it. And apparently it works all right. I don't have an issue okay. with it. All right. So. I've never heard of. I've cat never heard of, of that. ground up walnuts. We use the, the Martha Stewart pretty kitty stuff because it kitty. doesn't smell. Yeah. Yes, but because all those items are extremely heavy, those are the Makes top three sense. items they hate delivering. Yeah, you know, and you don't want to just throw it on the ground because it right. probably burst. And one, that's it, why people ask for them to be delivered because they don't want to haul a 20 pound go. bag of cat litter at home. I don't know which driver it is, but we have one Amazon deliver at our, our apartment building. He ain't going up those stairs, yep. and he just leaves it at the, at bottom. the bottom. It's <gasps> only one guy, but he'll really? leave it at the and, bottom. And does this thing? Yep. Takes off. And he's off. Wow. Okay, genetic testing firm 23andMe confirmed, yep, hackers got a hold of data from 7 million su subscribers. That's about half of their total database. Digital spies used old passwords to break into customers' files. The company said that a significant number of files containing information about other users' ancestry had also uh, had also been stolen. The California-based company said the breach affected millions who have opted into its DNA relatives feature, which allows customers to share their connection with other users. 23andMe initially, no, we didn't do it. They denied the claims about the hack earlier this mm -hmm. year. So, you know, when you deny it, then you're thinking, okay, well, it didn't what are you happen. Hiding? Yeah, and what are you hiding? Right, yeah. because everybody thought this was going to be completely safe, and that wasn't the case. I, I think the, the challenge is, is that when this first came out, it was being sold as 
just this kind of cool novelty thing to do, right? Mm -hmm. And you don't think about the implications that giving someone your DNA could have. And I don't think at that particular time a lot of people were in that mind of thinking. And now, you know, you're talking about someone having your DNA, which is the last thing that you personally own it. yourself. It's your own digital map. The only thing after that is your birthday. They you can't take that away from <laughs> you. Everything else is yours, right? It's true. You can't change any of that. And, um, do they still do the spit where you put it? Is that how they the do swap? it? Yeah. The swap mm -hmm. zone. I did it last year. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm on that well, list probably. I know all about you, Maddie. But I mean, Sorry. in a sense, it's like, are they have they put together, and I, it wouldn't surprise me if they have, but an, an entire database of DNAs. And that's how they've solved a lot of these crimes, too. They've been able to access some of this information. Well, I owe people money, <laughs> and now they're going to go to my relatives, and I go, where's Mitch? <laughs> I want to know where he's at. That's a pink slip. It's a pink slip, Not in, a for DNA. sure. Yeah. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Well, a chihuahua named Bean made a run for it on the Staten Island Expressway before he was nabbed by motorists in a dramatic caught-on-video rescue. The pooch is first seen on dash cam video scrambling down the highway as cars whizzed past him. Several drivers slow down to try and corral the elusive pup. Eventually, one motorist catches up with the frisky runaway and pulls him inside of her car. The Good Samaritan said she spotted Bean on the busy roadway and began tailing him along with the other drivers. Took an additional foot pursuit to catch up with the frightened pup. Word has it the Chihuahua ran off after getting spooked by a pit bull. Aww. That's terrifying. And I, my goodness, she's out running in traffic. And people will do that for animals. I mean, yeah. they'll, they'll risk their lives outside of if it was a person. But God bless them. And it, and it shows there are yeah. good people in this world no matter where they're at. Love that seeing is true. Them. Progresso Soups, we all heard about yeah. them. They settled an online debate on whether you can actually eat cold soup straight from the can. There was a video shared on social media with the user saying that she eats soup cold and straight out of the can. In the clip, she held a can of Progresso soup with a gold spoon inside, calling the product Elite. Uh, the soup's brand manager saw that post, responded, and according to Progresso, their soups provide high quality meals without the extra prep work or cooking time needed. So, they can definitely get behind the straight from the can approach, even if that means no kitchen time. Company confirmed that their soups can be consumed cold or whatever temperature you prefer and agreed the product is top of the line. But we, of course, need to find out for ourselves. Is it al dente? Is that what they call it? When it cold, what's cold soup? Gazpacho. Gazpa gazpacho. Mm -hmm. Right. So. Well, gazpacho is a kind of cold soup. It's right? a cold yeah. soup. Con right? Yeah. So it's yeah. not a blanket thing is like, like al fresco? Is consomme cold soup? I can't, there is a name you, for it. Tell yeah. me it is, and I believe okay. you, Jay. You'll say fancy words. <laughs> All right, you have. So we're gonna try it okay. here and see. Here's the thing about I this don't time know of year, about though. This. I want. Oh. I love hot soup. Hot soup on a cold morning. On a cold day, it's like it's been. I have uh, Manhattan clam chowder. You got Manhattan. minestrone. I got, minestrone. I got the good old chicken noodle. Chicken noodle. All right. Uh, uh, I, poor, uh, listen, it, it, it's for the job. The consistency is <laughs> a little. Look, I mean, don't trade by, but. Uh, mm -mm. I got it. To me, it, it soup needs has to be, to be warm. cold. And this has a little pasta noodle in it, so I can justify eating cold yeah. pasta. By the way, this is how Jackson really eats. Too. She won't tell you. <laughs> yeah, she does. She eats straight out of the can. She goes home. And just usually eats ravioli. All right, I right prefer New England. I don't think I could. I, I don't think I could eat uh, New England clam chowder mm. cold. Hmm. No, because it's disgusting looking. First off, but Manhattan yeah. clam chowder looks more like a soup. I mean, it's not mm. horrible, but it's not no, preferable. It's not, yeah. Yes. I think heat does something. I mean, if you don't have any where to heat yeah. it. I guess you got to do what you got to do, but. I mean, if you're hungry and you're trapped somewhere, yeah, you'll I mean, eat it cold. in your car, you're just going to eat it no matter what. <laughs> but I always figured with all the ingredients and everything, you would have to heat it up so you wouldn't get sick. But yes. I guess that's yeah. not the case. Agreed. But Progresso says, uh, no, you don't have to do that. So Progresso, if you'd like yeah. to send us some, uh, uh, we did this for you. Palette yeah. of soup. And maybe even just some spoons. We'll be happily eating. It and we'll smells delicious. It's lovely, but I would prefer it heated. Right. They didn't pay us to do this, no. by the way, all right? So keep that in mind here. Uh, there is no uh, better thing in the world and no anything that's not as lucrative in time in the world in history than to be a witch, right? Hmm. No joke. The internet is actually point six directions and making some witches and warlocks very rich. Get this. On TikTok alone, the hashtag witch talk has 
already had 49 billion views. Over on Etsy, there are 36,000 products and services offered. Psychic's really working uh, their magic, if <laughs> you will. Miss Cleo. Yeah, Miss Cleo, cleaning up. Their industry alone is worth more than $2 billion. I think, you know, we were taught witches, you know, or like, <laughs> yeah. you know, that sort of thing. And, there, and it's actually, a, a lot of times, some consider, consider it a religion somewhat, too. Mm -hmm. um, you know, but we think of it as bad, but it's, that's, you know, they might look at our religions uh, individually as odd as well. Is that the Halloween effect? You know, we think oh, yeah. of the witches from Halloween, so that's, that's our version of, yeah. of what it is. In reality, there's so many different versions of it. And Salem is just one big tourist spot for it up there. Now it's yeah. right. Yeah, it's you think of all the bad things the that happen. Is that happen. You mean the murdering of yeah. women? And there's a gift shop. And there's a gift shop. <laughs> Next they'll be making us eat cold soup on TV That's or something like that. That's what I thought like about the Alamo. It's like you go there and there's a gift shop. I remember. Mm -hmm. Always remember to get something yeah. there. More Flash coming up right after this. Welcome back to The Big Show. I'm Mitch English along with Andrea Jackson, Matt Doolittle. The, our next guest is Dan Pontefract. He's got a new book out. It's called Work Life Bloom. Dan, thank you so much and welcome to Daily Flash. You know, inside your book, you offer up an updated look at the modern workforce and what you say is the work-life balance is actually a myth. Explain all that and how so. Hey, Mitch, great to be here. Work-life balance, it's about as useful as buying me a holiday comb for a gift, <laughs> given my state of hair. Okay. <laughs> I mean, at the end of the day, leaders have been espousing this myth for pretty much decades, as if work-life balance is a thing. So I'm asking you, Mitch, do you uh, do you have your phone beside you at night? Is that your new alarm clock? Yes. but Yeah, 100% yeah. it is. Yeah, I, turn, I, I put it on the thing, and it lights up as my alarm clock, 100%. Right. And so when you're in bed or when you wake up, what's the first thing you're doing? You're checking yes. notices, messages, Absolutely. right? Yeah, it, okay. it even does so, it for me. I don't even have to look. I wake up, it tells me everything I've missed. Okay. So there's just one little point. It's th that's, that's a microcosm of what's happening. Our lives have been interwoven between life and work. And uh, leaders are sitting there saying, we only care about you for your work. Okay. Yet they're coming into, quote, work, Mitch, anxious, they're obnoxiously isolated. They're lonely. They're stressed. They're obese. What's <laughs> happening? We've got it wrong, Mitch. I, I, I agree with you on that in the sense that our work is always with us. If an, if an email is sent at uh, 9 o'clock at night, sometimes you're expected to answer that sort of thing. Is that the direction you're saying is that we are not letting go of work and that's why there is no work-life uh, split? That's part of the reason. Like, it's there's a culpability. That means we can blame ourselves, Mitch. Fancy word there for a show like this, right? But right. Uh, ultimately, what we're what we're trying to say is leaders are also culpable. So what they're doing is they're pushing people to the limit, to the max, to the edge of the canyon, and we're falling over. Okay. And so unless we start taking considerations for what makes us better human beings and stop saying, we want you to be your most authentic self at work, how about... Well, what's your best, and how can I help you be your best given the situation? I, I, I can appreciate that for sure. And well, but talking about work, the ups and downs that we all experience in life, how does that affect our work? Well, I mean, at the end of the day, we'll have situations where we might not be, quote, performing. Uh, we might be on sort of uh, cruise control. But a leader has to ask themselves, well, is that okay? Should everybody, for example, Mitch, be engaged at work? Okay. And we've, we've taken hostage of that work. So if we're not balanced, not an entire team is going to be uh, completely engaged all the time because life and work have ups and downs. And I think that's the myopia of leaders is that they expect their entire team to be high performing at all times. Mitch, it's impossible. I'm here to spoil alert. By the way, another $10 word there for myopia. That's a big, big word for us here. Appreciate that. But the, uh, how, what, well, then, okay, we have to have something, though, because, I mean, we've been taught that, but it sounds like you're, you're, you're going, uh, not say going after, but you're speaking to, to leaders. But we should be a leader. A leader in our life is what I'm getting from you. So how can we keep that work life, just to keep the moniker going, uh, more balanced? Yeah. So, and you're right. It starts with us. It starts me and you, whether you lead a team or not. There's a, there's a saying I have in the book, our lives shape our work. Nevertheless, our work shapes us. Yeah. And we have to come to that uh, 
uh, let's call it the come to Dan meeting here today, Mitch. Or maybe it's a come to Mitch meeting. It's a come to Mitch meeting. Let's, let's do that. And let's be real with ourselves. What is it that's uh, affecting us at work? And what might we do with that? Whether it's a conversation with our boss, ourselves, but also there's certain life factors and the things that we're in charge of. So how are your relationships? Yes. Are you tending to them? Do you have zero relationships? Are you lonely? There's just one life factor that's going to make you feel a little bit happier and maybe even blooming, dare I say. But if you're not doing the work, if you're not tending to the garden, to extend right. the metaphor, you're going to end up a weed. All right. It's Christmas time. Dan, we want to have you back because you, you, you hit something that can affect everybody. You want to get a copy of the book, Work Life Bloom, How to Nurture a Team That Flourishes? Just visit danpontefract.com. And again, no combs for Dan for Christmas. <laughs> None right? whatsoever. Thank you, Dan. Great stuff. Give a gift change alive. Actor Kel Mitchell joins us with what he's giving this holiday season. Kel, tell us about the World Vision Gift Catalog. Oh man, so uh, I love the uh, gift catalog. You can log on there and uh, get some amazing gifts for people all around the world. Um, you know, one of them that's really, really good is that they have uh, alpacas that you can actually get for families or goats that you can get for families and they can sell the milk from that goat uh, and you can take them out of poverty uh, just by that gift. It's just a uh, a wonderful gift catalog uh, that has amazing donations that you can help people all around the world. Kel, tell us more about your partnership with World Vision. Yeah, I've been working with uh, World Vision for a few years now, um, and I love what they do, like the, the marathon for clean water, uh, and then also to uh, the gift catalog. I'm always supporting that. Um, I'm all about uh, giving back and spreading love. Uh, I love God. And I love giving back. And that's the same thing that World Vision does and loves too. So, um, yeah, it's a great partnership. It's amazing work. Before we let you go, tell us about how it's going with Good Burger 2. Man, Good Burger 2 is uh, doing awesome. It's so excited to uh, be back in the uh, Good Burger world and putting on that wig <laughs> uh, and saying, welcome to Good Burger. <laughs> so uh, it's been awesome and working with my brother. Uh, and it's been great. We came in at number one. Uh, it's the most viewed movie on Paramount Plus since uh, its launch. And so uh, we're excited that the reception has been great and people are enjoying it. And yeah, <laughs> it's been great. And where can we go for more information? Uh, visit worldvision.org, worldvision.org. Awesome. Thanks for joining us, Kel. We'll be sure to post this information on our website at dailyflashshow.com. Once you're there, you can find all sorts of episodes and interviews. And also, you click that button right there on the homepage. You can reach out to us with anything that's on your mind. We're back right after this. Welcome back to Daily Flash. Here's Fabian Marcano with this week's The Beat. More than 20 years ago, New York's Z100, the most listened to pop radio station in the country, introduced Jingle Ball, a holiday concert with the year's top artists performing their number one hits. And the show quickly became the most anticipated holiday tradition with tickets selling out in minutes and has since grown into a globally recognized phenomenon and now a must stop appearance for the world's biggest artists. SZA brought out the incredible vocals and dance moves with so much energy for the fans to enjoy she kicked off her set with Love Galore, her collab with Travis Scott, and then SZA was also feeling herself on stage, jumping around and showing off her moves. She then moved into Broken Clocks, complete with her dancers counting the hours with some clocking, ticking moves, and then following that, following that song, SZA commanded the stage alone for a mesmerizing performance of Shirt and stunning rendition of Kiss Me More, her collab with Doja Cat. As her set moved into Kill Bill, SZA brought out the most amazing part of the night. She brought knives out and started dancing with knives, sort of like a, a Britney Spears kind of collab, I guess we're making, and it's, it's her popular track, Kill Bill, and really making it feel like she might really kill her ex on stage. And finally, she ended her performance by asking the crowd if anyone could use a good day after, t after such a tough year she's had. Uh, the fans began to cheer, saying, yes, yes, we can use a, a good day. And she ends her wonderful set in New York City for Jingle Ball, performing at this year's iHeart Jingle Ball. We had Olivia Rodrigo, SZA, obviously. We had One Republic. Sabrina Carpenter was there. Jelly Roll, Big Time Rush. 
Pentatonix, David Kushner, Melanie Martinez, and a special performance from Cher herself. And from the crowd going absolutely crazy from Olivia's to, uh, to Cher's iconic performances of her new holiday song and classic hit, um, Olivia did bring out her rocking teen angst. Cher was dancing all night long to her new holiday hit and fan favorite. One Republic spotlighted Beyonce, Taylor Swift, and others. Sabrina Carpenter turned one of her biggest songs into a fun Christmas tune. So you can really start getting into that Christmas vibe with Jingle Ball, of course, all the way from New York City. And last but not least, I got something that's coming up that could possibly like for any Latino and American. We might both enjoy this. Coming very soon your, to your speakers is a surprise song with Pharrell Williams, Sway Lee, and Hold On Now. This artist might shock some, some of you guys. It's official. Rao Alejandro will be featured in the incredible song, and we all get a taste of this at Louis Vuitton's pre-fall 2024 collection. So the trailer is uh, what we heard during this event and it reveals that Rao Alejandro and Sway Lee will unite English and Spanish in the verses of the song, thus providing a new touch that discourages both of the artists. The, the rhythms are urban with tropical and R&B touches the, the, that take a US, uh, or us straight to a plan with friends on the beach. The news of the collaboration between the two, which will be produced by Pharrell Williams, has completely revolutionized their followers. A lot of people are just stunned by the fact that they're even making a song together. And I'm Fabian Marcano, you just felt the beat. Thanks, Fabian. All right, Lauren Fix, the car coach, breaks down what to expect in Elon Musk's new Cybertruck. It's all in today's Car Smarts. Remember that Cybertruck? That was quite a while ago. But here's everything you need to know. And it's been almost four years since Elon Musk announced the Tesla Cybertruck, and there's still none of these vehicles on the road. And it appears that the automaker is finally getting ready to release these final versions late in 2023. So here's what we know about the truck. Tesla hasn't released full specifications or pricing it, but we do have some good ideas, and that's why I wanna share this with you. Despite having taken thousands of deposits, even so, there has been enough leaks and spy shots of the truck that we can form a pretty fairly good picture of what to expect. This is what we do know about the Cybertruck. The base single motor rear wheel drive version will be the most affordable, while the upcoming tri-motor configuration will be significantly more expensive and that'll be available afterwards. Tesla doesn't offer options and packages like many other automakers. Instead, it offers most features with its vehicles on the base price. However, buyers can add on two extremely expensive driver assistance packages. One of those extremely expensive packages that can be as expensive as $15,000 is the autopilot, which by the way, is not self-driving. We haven't seen much of the truck's interior, but a few spy shots and renderings that we've seen online they show a very minimal interior with a large center screen, which is to be expected, that controls everything, like all the other Teslas, and an oval steering wheel. And in some shots, we're seeing the truck that has Tesla's controversial yoke steering wheel, but the automaker will likely offer a traditional wheel for buyers that prefer it. The Cybertruck has a glass roof like other Tesla models. The angular exterior shape, which may be changed due to National Highway Traffic Safety Administration regulations because NHTSA will not let them have sharp lines where those two panels meet, that could be dangerous to other drivers. We'll see the final version and then we'll see how much angles they're able to get away with. The exterior design is easily the most unique design feature of the Cybertruck. Tesla calls it an exoskeleton. The truck is built entirely from stainless steel. Although it won't be shiny due to regulations, it could be brushed or even a possible color in the future that we're waiting to see. And the exoskeleton doesn't appear to have any curves to its body as the truck looks very smooth and may be different on the final version, but it is pretty cool looking overall. I'm Lauren Fix and you can find this information on my website, carcoachreports.com and Daily Flash Show. This is Daily Flash with your hosts, Andrea Jackson and Mitch English. Trending news and entertainment. This is Daily Flash. Hi, everybody. I am Mitch English. I'm Andrea Jackson. This is Daily Flash, your source for trending news and entertainment. You, I'm certain, have heard it this month playing all along. Silver Bells by Silver Bell. Bing Crosby. Bing Crosby. One of the things on that. This is interesting. Uh, we know it as Silver Bells. It was written, though, with a different name. Do you know what the name was? And I'm not making this up, all right? Golden Falls? Very close. <laughs> My, uh, Maddie, you want to take a guess? Uh, the original title for Silver Bells. Blue Jingles? Blue Jingles. You would think, believe it or not, 
Uh, now, the song written way back when was originally called Tinkle Bells. And uh, Tinkle it was written Bells. by Ray Evans and Jay Livingston, and they, they shared like an office, and they'd okay. write songs and stuff, and they used to have this little bell, and they'd say, oh, it's a tinkle, tinkle it's a tinkle bell. Well, Jay goes home and says, oh, honey, this is my impersonation, Jay. Hey, honey, uh, I wrote this great song. It's called Tinkle Bells. And his wife's like, okay, you know there's another meaning for tinkle, right? <laughs> and he goes, what? I didn't know that. Ray never told me. Oh, goodness. And, and, and then he, I, I assume he threw something at the wall, and they go, we're going to change it, and change the name to Silver Bells, because it had two syllables. Oh, oh. Yeah, they, that's interesting. Well, they tried, they tried, <laughs> they tried uh, you know, aluminum, and it didn't work out. It didn't out. work out. So when you see that, uh, think about it. Uh, if It could have been Tinkle Bells. I went to that club called Tinkle Bells. Tinkle, no, Atlanta. that's, that, no, yeah. No. Okay. That wouldn't be, ben, ben Crosby wouldn't be found there. Not to be sure. confused with Tinker Bell. Tinker Bell. And they, I think, uh, you know, if you think about it, I bet there would have been some lawsuits yeah. out of that eventually. Very true. There oh, well, go. that's some good Christmas history. A little, little trivia Thank there. Thank you for that. Tinkle Bells. Well, genetic testing from 23andMe confirmed hackers did get a hold of data from 7 million subscribers, about mm -hmm. half of their total database. Digital spies used old passwords to break into customer files. Now, the company said that a significant number of files containing information about other users' ancestry had also been stolen. The California-based company said the breach affected millions who had opted into its DNA relatives feature, which allows customers to share their connection with other users. 23andMe initially denied the claims about the hack earlier this year, but they have since confirmed, yes, it did in fact happen. What is the one thing that is even more valuable than your identity? Your DNA. Your DNA. When this came out, I didn't think about it. I wound up going the other route and getting it done. So I've, I've gotten this done. So they know all about me now, apparently, I guess. <laughs> but the, no, the, the, this is all uh -huh. foolproof. Nobody's yeah. going to be able to do this. Now, you say, okay, so what, they know about my DNA. Think about what that information that they can do to you, especially mm -hmm. with AI coming along. And I know this is going to sound very conspiracy theorist, but if they know, let's say, you are susceptible to s some kind of... Uh, um, uh, food or something like that. Allergies, or, or, yeah. Uh, say again? Allergies. Or allergies like or something yeah. like that. Okay. They, they can direct, you know, things towards you. Or if they know that you are, oh, your lineage yeah. is something that is, that is, uh, pr has a propensity to, to be obese or whatever, maybe diet stuff. Mm -hmm. And you go, all oh, small stuff that I don't know. But that's what, that's just surface things that they can do. Mm -hmm. Your DNA is yours. And, it's, it's just like robots. We think, oh, this I want to find out 23andMe, where I came from. It, it starts off innocent, man. Well, I think it's sold as a novelty, right? It sounds neat. You can find out your genetic makeup, how much, you know, where you come from, and then it can connect you to other relatives, you know, who have also been on the system. But it's terrifying to think, like you said, what they yeah. can do with all that information. Um, and I know when it first came out, very popular people doing it and that sort of thing. Uh, uh, James, our producer, was very upset when he found out his lineage. <laughs> <laughs> and he will remind us all the time. Oh, really? He's very upset about his lineage. So uh, ask him if you ever run across it. All right, a chihuahua named Bean made a run for it on the Staten Island Expressway uh, before he was actually nabbed by motorists and caught in a dramatic caught on video rescue. Check it out. The pooch is the first scene on dash cam video, scrambling down the highway as cars just whiz by. Oh, Several drivers oh, slow down, oh, try to corral. This comes to a happy ending. Don't worry, guys. Several oh. drivers slow down to a and try to corral the elusive pup. Eventually, one motorist catches up on the frisky runaway and pulls him inside the car. The Good Samaritan said that she spotted Bean on the busy roadway Jeez. and began tailing him along with other drivers. Isn't it interesting what we'll do for animals? Yes. Yeah. There was a, hey, I do it running naked up and down the road. <laughs> all of a sudden, they're calling the cops up. They're calling the cops. Yeah. Nobody would pick me up at all. Quizzing by your honking. I, I'm glad to see that because it says, you know, there's good people out there that well, would risk their life. It's at night? At it night, looks yeah. like it's at night, or maybe it was early in the morning, but got Either me. way, dark. Yeah, dark, dark All on right. the roadways. All right, more Flash coming up after this. Welcome back to Daily Flash. I'm Mitch English. The holidays are all about celebrations and sharing magical moments together. Walt Disney Resorts knows how to put all of that together and put it all in one place. Well, actually, several places all around Walt Disney World. My buddy Matt Doolittle and I got a chance to find all those sweet spots all around the Walt Disney World Resorts. 
to Walt Disney World Resort is always a magical place to be at during the holidays. And even though there's plenty to do in the park, guess what? There's holiday magic outside of the park. And you don't need a ticket to experience them. First up, the Grand Floridian. And as you walk into the Grand Floridian, it is amazing. Inside of it is the gingerbread house. And this place is delicious. I mean, literally, it's delicious. I'll get to that in just one second. Inside, you can get brownie trees. You can get some peppermint bark. And believe it or not, see those shingles on there? It takes over a 1,000 pounds of honey, 600 pounds of powdered sugar, all for a great tasting shingle. This is literally one of the shingles. Mm. And as you're enjoying the Grand Floridian, you can check out the Gasparilla Island Grill, where they have some really cool treats, like this present peppermint pop. This thing's really cool because it's a brownie with homemade peppermint inside of it. Then you've got this delicious snowman that is filled with spice mousse. The best part about it all is when you enjoy these treats, you get the best views ever of what? The Magic King. For over at Disney Beach Club Resort, the holiday celebration continues. Hey, it's Florida. Of course you can enjoy the beach. Now, during the holidays here at Disney's Beach Club Resort, you can order this holiday milkshake. It's a cookie butter milkshake with caramel drizzle, holiday sprinkles, and then it's topped with a Christmas tree cupcake. Oh, I love resort life. That's good. All right, now we're off to beautiful Disney Springs. Shopping, dining, and plenty of sweet treats. Emirates Patisserie is the place at Disney Springs if you want some delicious pastries, cakes, and unbelievable food. But during the holiday season, you won't believe what they have. Like these great treats. Come here, check this out. This is the holiday sweet petite cake. You got the hot cocoa cream brulee and the Christmas tree cream puff. Delicious. And what would the holidays be without chocolate from the ganachery right here at Disney Springs? And you know what? They've got the cure for the common chocolate. We got a surprise here. We gotta find out what's inside. It is the gingerbread Mickey chocolate pinata. It's got a special holiday surprise inside. Let's check it out. You know, Mitch, we've had a long day of all the festivities here at Disney Springs. So we, you know what? Let's take a load off here at Jack Lindsay's Hangar Bar. This holiday dish right here, the naughty or nice deviled eggs. And let's wash it down with some post-flight milk and cookies with coquito. And then we're going to finish it up with an oh ham and cheese trees. But again, it's all about the presentation. Sage. You know, there's a lot of great shopping here at Disney Springs for the holidays. But you know what? My favorite store, of course, is the World of Disney Store, the largest Disney store in the world. I'm going to go in and grab a few things for the holidays. I'll be right back. And as you're working your way around this amazing area, you need to get yourself one of these complimentary maps. Why? It's going to give you the location of 19 different trees. Each one is themed for the different Disney character, movie, or show. Find them all. Take this map to the Redemption Center for a very special surprise. All right, here's number one. All right, I'll give it to you early, Mitch. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas is the best Christmas ever! Thank you, Matt! Man, you talk about a good time out there. Yeah. And as I mentioned in there, the, the best part about Disney Springs, you just walk around and unbelievable dinners. You can have restaurants are there, and it's the whole feeling this time of year that you get that uh, that holiday spirit. Yeah, the shopping there, too, shopping's is great. fantastic. I love Disney Springs. Yeah, Disney Springs is always a fun place to uh, be able to check out. Plus, there's some water on the other the side. The boathouse, and if you oh, get a chance to do the amphicars, you go I out on the... Oh, so much You drive fun. a car right oh, into the water. So cool. No lie. Really neat. <laughs> Attention shoppers, Christmas is less than a week away. Here's lifestyle expert Marissa Brawny with some great last minute gift ideas. The holidays are here and I've partnered with some great brands to give you some great last minute gift ideas, starting with the trademark collection by Wyndham, especially their incredible Viva by Wyndham all-inclusive resorts across Mexico, the Dominican Republic, and the Bahamas. And speaking of travel, I'm sure you've heard of Rosetta Stone. It's a unique and meaningful gift for anyone who wants to learn a new language for an upcoming international trip, connect with loved ones, or even pick up some helpful phrases. And check out Nextdoor's for sale 
and free section, where neighbors are selling everything from vintage jewelry and hard-to-find collectibles to popular toys and big-ticket items like musical instruments. I love a one-stop shop. Duluth Trading Company is it. They have high-quality apparel, accessories, home goods, even gear for your car or truck. The Modern Mushroom Soft Chews from Force Factor and The Vitamin Shop are a perfect health-focused stocking stuffer. And for more information, you can head to my website, marissabrainy.com. Well, according to a recent survey, nearly half of independent workers say choosing a health care plan is actually really, really complicated. Here's what you need to know. Wondering how to choose quality and affordable health insurance when you're self-employed? Noah Lang, co-founder and CEO at Stride Health, shares what you should consider when enrolling in health care. Choosing the right health care plan can be a complicated and daunting task. Between navigating plan benefits, tax credits, insurance premiums, and changes to plans in 2024, it can seem impossible to know you're making the right choice. Open enrollment is going on now through January 16th, 2024, allowing anyone to enroll in individual health insurance plans via a broker, health plan, or government marketplace established by the Affordable Care Act. And if you want your coverage to start by January 1st, be sure to enroll by December 15th. And to have coverage start by February 1st, enroll by January 16th. There's only a few days left to ensure you get the coverage you need for 2024. The good news is now there are companies and platforms like my company, Stride Health, that partner with the government marketplaces to offer an easier alternative to picking a better health plan. To learn more, visit stridehealth.com. If you've got a tech lover on your holiday list, we've got a great gift idea for you. The holidays are a great time to get amazing deals on the latest tech, helping you stay connected to loved ones. Some wireless providers make you choose between getting a great value and a great network. At T-Mobile, you can get both. They're offering the ultimate tech bundle. You can get a free smartphone, free smartwatch, and free earbuds. In addition, new and existing T-Mobile customers score with perks like free Netflix and free in-flight Wi-Fi. Check out all of T-Mobile's holiday deals at T-Mobile.com offers. All right, and now something for all you gamers out there. It's the latest from Nintendo. Spend the holidays with Mario and Friends available on the Nintendo Switch family of systems. This includes the Nintendo Switch, which can be played at home, on the TV, or on the go. The Nintendo Switch OLED model system, which offers an enhanced gaming experience, and the Nintendo Switch Lite, a handheld system dedicated to portable play. Wondering what games everyone is playing? Check out Super Mario Bros. Wonder, Mario's new adventure, which turns that classic 2D side-scrolling gameplay on its head. And there's The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, an epic adventure where players will explore the vast land of Hyrule. Pokemon fans can explore the hidden treasure of Area Zero, which unlocks new paid content for Pokemon Scarlet and Pokemon Violet games. Plus, there's Pikmin 4, which has players guiding small, plant-like creatures across a mysterious planet. For more information, visit Nintendo.com and Happy Holidays! Rated E to E10+. One in eight women are affected by breast cancer, including Juliana Rancic, who is celebrating 12 years being cancer-free. She joins us now with more about the college football avocado cure bowl. Welcome, Juliana. Hey, thank you so much for having me. You know, I am so excited to be partnering with Avocados from Mexico. They are sponsoring the Cure Bowl that's happening in Orlando this weekend. And it's a college football game benefiting cancer research. And for me, that is a cause very near and dear to my heart as a breast cancer survivor for 12 years now. Um, I love to partner with brands that really, you know, care about breast cancer and cancer research in general. So this is gonna be such an exciting event, a wonderful event, a way to really give back. And um, so everyone can tune in. It's gonna be 3.30 Eastern on Saturday on ABC. But before that, we're holding something that I'm really excited about. I'm gonna be with the Avocados for Mexico team. And we're gonna be there at the stadium having a great time, but also we're gonna be making signs during something called the Super Good Rally. So we're going to be making signs with other people's names on them that are going through breast cancer that just need a little bit of love and support. So I'm really excited about that. And in fact, everyone can get in on that on social. All you have to do is check out the Avocados for Mexico Instagram page and get in on the conversation with us using the hashtag super good rally and let us know who you're rallying for in your life who could just use that extra love and support as well. And on top of that, I love avocados. I'm sure a lot of you do. Avocados are such a versatile food. They're very, very easy to put in 
you know, a smoothie, a salad, on avocado toast, as you know, so on bread, um, and, you know, guacamole, which goes great with football, by the way, as you know. Um, so it's a great, great, delicious food, but it's also a superfood. It's packed with 20 vitamins and minerals. So it's not only delicious, but it's really good for you. And to learn more about it, all you have to do is go to avocadosformexico.com. It's really exciting to be part of this event. So get in on the conversation on social media. Be sure to follow Avocados for Mexico on social media as well for um, recipes and all sorts of tips. We all know this time of year is not just a time for gift giving, but it's also a time to set the stage for a financially rewarding future. So how can a small investment, even just a dollar, help you prepare for your financial future? Joining us now to discuss is Maya Sudahakaran. She is the head of growth and acquisition at Plink Invest. Welcome to the show. As we enter December and the holiday season, this is a great time to reflect on how you've been managing your finances while also setting a strong tone for 2024 and the years ahead. Don't wait. As we enter resolutions, kickstart your financial goals now in December before you enter. There are many ways the Plink app can help you take those first steps. Firstly, there's no minimum required. You can open a Plink account with as little as a dollar. Secondly, set up automatic contributions. That way you can maintain the discipline and you don't have to be thinking about investing constantly. We lead with education and our Plink Think app can give you tips and how-tos on how to become a more educated investor. In order to learn more, go to plinkinvest.com or follow us on Instagram at plinkinvest or download our app at the Apple Store or Google Play and start your investing journey today. Well, don't go anywhere. We are going to talk about gift giving and wait <laughs> until you hear what Mitch has given his wife for Christmas this year. Watch what you say, ladies. <laughs> okay, that's all I got to say. That's next. It was the month of Christmas, and all through the flash, the hosts were rehearsing as Matt took out the trash. How is this my job? The cameras were in place. The scripts handled with care. How come the good-looking voice guy never gets on air? Mitch in his necktie. Andrea in her dress. Are we going to shoot the show? I don't know, I guess. The viewers were watching from all over the map. You think your job's bad? I have to read this crap. So wherever you watch us, TV, phone, or our site. Happy holidays to all! You had one line. Yeah, I had you all a good night. Season's greetings from all of us at Daily Flash. <laughs> and welcome back to Daily Flash, Matt Doolittle, Andrea Jackson, Mitch English. We are heading into the holidays, full steam ahead. Uh, okay, so when you, Matt, when you get married, and Jackson, you're on the other side of this, so I'm going to get you yes. uh, your opinion. When you say, uh, I don't want anything, do you really want something? A hundred percent, yes. So Matt, yeah, we had yeah. to learn yes. this. A little something, yeah. All right, so uh, my, my, my wife, Liza, she's like, don't give me anything, don't give me anything, don't, I don't want anything. Well, we have this issue at our house where a raccoon comes through uh, our backyard and starts digging up all the whole yard. Yeah. So she told me to get on Amazon the other day and said, hey, can uh, you order some, I've heard that if you get coyote urine, It'll keep the <laughs> it'll keep the raccoons away. I go, all right. She goes, but they make it granulated with citronella. I'm like, oh Why? man, I'm like, how do you know that? Right, right exactly. Yes. So I get on the Amazon. I'm looking everywhere. I go, well, I found this kind, but it doesn't have uh, the uh, citronella. Time. <laughs> right. And she goes, oh, I don't know. Just get it or whatever. It's just whatever one you want to get. And they had liquid, and then they had the granulated. So I, okay. So I'm on there, and I go, a little light bulb literally I love popped this. up in my head. So I call it, I get on there, I order it, I get it gift wrap, I write this nice little note that says, I love you so much, Merry Christmas to the woman who has it all, or something like that. Jesus. And so it came into the mail, she opens it, <laughs> and then she reads it, and I'm like, ha ha, very funny. I go, well, there you go, there's your, you say you didn't want anything. <laughs> You're getting coyote pissed. I'm sorry. <laughs> Packaged with it. I love you now. Yeah, right, exactly. So when you women say, I don't want anything at all, but you really mean you, do. you want something, we do. It's that's true. what you get. The gift that's that keeps on giving. Yes. <laughs> you do. Keep on. And the raccoons stay away, so it's a good thing. Everybody wins. Everybody wins. <laughs> we don't want you to stay away from us no. at all. We'll be back in just 23 short hours. Thank you for spending your time with us. Yes. For more information on any of today's stories, be sure to visit our website, dailyflashshow.com. What are we, five, six days away? from Christmas? Yeah, like five days. Yeah. Wow. Don't, don't send us your coyote stuff. No, no, no coyote no. urine, good. please. No need. no need to gift wrap that. Not at all. Y'all take care. Have a fantastic day. Take we'll see you when we look at you. Bye-bye, everyone. <laughs>